All right, so you're going to have some fun this morning, but before he starts, I want to uh, just remind you guys of something. So he goes all over the country, speaking to adults, students, what have you. Um, But when he leaves Hill Country, I want for him to say that those students at Hill Country were the most well-behaved and the most receptive kids that I have ever seen. Yes, ma'am? All right, now, something extra special about my friend here is that when he was in sixth grade, he came to Hill Country. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I know you're going to be great listeners, and I think there's going to be some opportunity to participate. So I'm going to turn it over to Tyler Campbell. Thank you so very much. Round of applause for y'all's principal, man. Round of applause. To my young men, young women, students, teachers, and staff, um, I'm so geeked. I'm so hyped. I'm so excited to be here with you all. I haven't been to this school, and I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how many years because it's been a long time. It's going to make me feel old. Um, but to look inside of you all's eyes and to see your faces, um, it gets me excited because I remember what it was like to, to sit in your shoes. And you all have so much opportunity, so much untapped potential. Um, You all are just a breath of fresh air. And first and foremost, I want you all to just give yourselves a warm round of applause for just being you. That's right, for just being you. Pat yourselves on the back. So, like your principal was saying, um, I, I travel around, go to different schools, different places, and different states. And all that is great. It's been an honor to serve other young men, other young women just like yourselves. But it hits me at a different place when I can actually come back to a school that I went to. Um, It takes it to another level when I have the opportunity to speak to kids who grew up in the same neighborhood as I once did. I'll take this to another level of passion and energy. So I want you all to be excited. We're going to have some fun in here. Y'all don't have to be in class right now, so give yourselves a round of applause for that. So, all, so listen to me, listen to me. All I ask, all I ask is this. All I ask is this. Um, there's going to be some audience participation with what we do. And I want y'all to be respectful of your other students. Um, understand that there are some people who are going to come up to this microphone, and they have a lot to say. So I want you all to give, you them, give them your undivided attention, and I promise we will have fun. This is not going to be your normal boring assembly, and I promise that you all will walk out of here better students than the way that you walked in, all right? So there's one thing that I do when I do it everywhere that I speak, and this is our first chance for audience participation here. Again, let my energy mimic your energy, all right? On the count of three, I need you all to yell out, TC, speak as loud as you can. One, two, three. That's what I'm talking about. That's the energy I'm talking about. All right, so listen in, listen in, listen in very closely. So I'll break it down to you because I want you to give you a little background about who I am, where I come from, okay? I grew up on 2937 Thousand Oaks Drive, okay? That street is about three streets north of here as you're heading towards Barton Creek Mall. Some of y'all live on Thousand Oaks Drive, some of y'all live off of Thousand Oaks Drive. You know exactly what it is that I'm talking about, okay? I went to school all through EISD. I started at Cedar Creek Elementary. That's right, that's right. Hey, that's exactly right. No, no, listen, no disrespect to Eanes. My brother went to Eanes, Um, no disrespect. Bridgepoint people, if you're in the building, I love you guys, but man, I got a soft spot in my heart for Cedar Creek. Went through Hill Country Middle School. That's right. That's right. Listen in, listen in, listen in. So I went through Hill Country Middle School, and I finished at Westlake High School. All right? Finished at Westlake, which is where you all will will go. Um, Listen in. Uh, I was blessed to receive a football scholarship uh, coming out of junior college. I ended up going to San Diego State University in San Diego, California. Great place. 
So I went to San Diego State University, and uh, I had dreams of playing in the National Football League. You know, dreams like something like Nick Foles, you know, somebody who, who went through Westlake High School. I know you guys are very familiar. I had a dream of playing professional football, and I was almost there. What ended up happening in my life is I ended up getting diagnosed with the autoimmune disease called multiple sclerosis. By a show of hands, have any of y'all ever heard what multiple sclerosis is? Okay, good. So those of you who don't know, listen to me very closely. What multiple sclerosis is, is it's autoimmune disease. And what that means is your body literally attacks itself. So because my body was attacking itself, I developed lesions on my brain. And those lesions led to paralysis, slurred speech, as well as just the overall inability to walk and talk. And so I was not able to continue to play football. And what I figured out was that uh, football was what I thought was my dream, what I was supposed to be doing with my life. But at times, young people, you need to understand that life will put you through various things, okay? Some of you all are going through your own individual things right now, okay? So let's talk real life for a second. Some of you all may have had parents who are going through a divorce or have been divorced. Maybe some of you all have lost somebody that you have loved very closely. And many of you are still just trying to figure out who you are. We all go through tough times in our lives. My tough time was that football was taken away from me for the very first time. But in doing so, because I never gave up and never quit on myself, in doing so, it gave me the opportunity to have a voice and I figured out that I could impact this world on a far greater scale than I ever could have playing the game of football. So I travel the country delivering these messages of inspiration and motivation to young people like yourselves because one day, young men and young women, students, generation of tomorrow, our future, y'all are going to be the ones to run this country. That's why I believe in giving each and every one of you all my very best. And I want to see that you all accomplish all of your goals and dreams. Now, by a show of hands, how many of you all have a goal or a dream? I should see everybody's hands raised up. All right, put your hands down. Put your hands down. Listen to me very closely. Listen to me very closely because this is important. So the unique thing about the word goals and dreams, I'm sure those are words that you all have heard all the time in your life, right? You've been encouraged to have goals and dreams. Well, what people have not come into your life and done probably is to help you understand that there is a difference between a goal and a dream. They're not the same thing. For instance, your dream is your destination. Your dream is your end all be all. My dream, professional football. Your dream may be to be a neurologist, an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, an athlete, a musician, an actress, an actor. Those are all your dreams. That's the ultimate that you want to accomplish in your life. But then you have goals. And what goals are, goals are the steps that you have to take to accomplish your dream. If you want to be an athlete, it should be a goal of yours, number one, to take care of your academics, number two, to ensure that you are putting out your very, very best effort. If you want to be a musician, you should be like studying music, falling in love with music, taking care of your academics, but doing something musically every day with your life. That's the difference. Your dream is your destination. Your goals are the steps that you have to take to get there. So by a show of hands, now that you all understand the difference between a dream and a goal, how many of you have a dream? My dear with the long hair right here in the gray shirt, keep your hands raised. Please come down. I need two more people. My brother right here in the black and green, come on down. And over here, over here, I need a lady and you right here in the yellow shirt. My man right here in the pink shirt right, right there, come on down. Y'all give them a round of applause. Give it up for your classmates. Come on over here. Come on over here. Come on over here. All right. All right. Now y'all listen in. This is what we're talking about. Come on in here, brother. You ain't gotta be. You ain't gotta be shy, my man. You all right? All right. I want you all to give them your attention because what we're gonna do is. And who wants to go first? Do I have any volunteers? I want. I have to pick one. He's cool. He's calm and he's collective. So normally I go ladies first, but the ladies were shy. Listen in. What I want you to do, my brother, is I want you to say your first name, and all I want you to tell me or tell your, your classmates is what your dream is. That's it. First name and what your dream is. Y'all ready? 
Okay, y'all listen in. Go ahead, my brother. Um, Evan, and I'd like to be a helicopter pilot for a hospital. Oh my gosh, y'all give that up. Round of applause for Evan. <laughs> so my brother, if nobody else has told you, I'm here to tell you, you can accomplish that. And I look forward to watching you be that helicopter pilot and saving the lives of individuals who need to be flown in because they don't have the transportation to do so. Dap that up. Y'all give him a warm round of applause. Y'all be seated. All right, listen in, listen in. So, first name? Madden. Madden, like the video game? No, no, not like the video game. Okay, no. okay. So, not like the video game, not like the video game. And just real quick, your dream? A singer. A singer, hey. I ain't mad at you, y'all clap that up. A singer. All right, so here's the deal. Listen in, listen in, listen in, listen in, listen in. These are your classmates, y'all respect them, listen in. So what I want you to do, first and foremost, know that you can accomplish it. That's rule number one, okay? Number two, I hope that you are doing something musically for yourself that brings you joy each and every day. And if you have it, please do so. Even if it's you singing in private, okay? Promise? Got it. All right, my dear, go be seated. I know you're nervous. Y'all can't get five? I can't get a five? <laughs> I like your shoes because you're wearing Adidas. Thank you. All right. First name? Mia. Mia. Okay. Miss Mia, dream. Um, I want to be a pediatric doctor. Oh, my goodness. So you want to help the babies and the young kids. That is awesome. Y'all give her a round of applause. <laughs> so, Miss Mia, Miss Mia, listen in, listen in, listen in, listen in, listen in. Miss Mia, I want you to understand this. Y'all listen in, stay standing. What I want you to know, first and foremost, you are beautiful and you are intelligent. There's nothing that you can't accomplish if you don't set it, as long as you set your mind to it. And you can be somebody that will help boys and girls as they're born into this world in more ways than you can imagine. You'll be a difference maker. Don't give up on your dream, all right? Come on in, my brother. Can you dab on him? Let's go, all right. All right, listen in, um, first name? Um, I'm Garrett, and I, my dream is to be a brain surgeon. Mate, what? Yo, y'all clap that up, man. Yo, you gotta give me a hug, man. Listen, listen, listen. So, so, hold on, y'all, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen up. I love the fact, listen, I love the fact that you're specific. You said you're not only be a doctor, but you wanna be a brain surgeon. And from one person battling a brain disease, which can leave people in wheelchairs, I want you to accomplish that so you can heal people who are in the same situation as me. All right? Accomplish your dream, my brother. Give me a handshake. Y'all be seated. Yeah, give your classmates a round of applause, y'all. Give them a round of applause. All right. So, so first off, like, Job well done to the young men, young women who came up here. The number one fear in the world is public speaking. Speaking in front of somebody. So the individuals who came up here, job well done, know that you, yeah, know that you, if you were able to come down here and speak into the microphone with clarity and confidence, you just conquered the number one fear in front of in terms of things that adults have trouble doing. So if you can do that, there should be no reason why you can't accomplish your goals and your dreams. Have confidence, all right? So right now you'll see that there's a four letter word that's on the screen behind me. I know y'all are smart, y'all already know what that says, okay? It's the word boss. So what I want y'all to say for me real quick is like a boss. Uh-uh, y'all gotta say it with some umph, like a boss. Say I am a boss. And so what I'm going to break down to you all very quickly is what BOSS is. And it serves as an acronym. My English teachers, if you're in the building, you know where I'm going with this. It's an acronym, meaning that you see the word BOSS, but an acronym means the, each letter stands for another word. The B stands for something. The O stands for something. The S and the S, they all stand for something, okay? And I'm gonna utilize this term 
and utilize some people that you all know and recognize to help build confidence in you that you can accomplish your goals and your dreams. And check this out. The reason why it's important for you to accomplish your goals and your dreams is because then you'll be walking in your purpose. And when you're walking in your purpose in life, that means you'll start to make smarter decisions because you have a calling over your life. You know what you're supposed to do with your life. And when you know what you're supposed to do, it makes way to help other people accomplish their goals and their dreams. You have to have a we attitude instead of a me attitude. It can't be all about yourself. These are your classmates. Okay, y'all are going to be going to school together for a long period of time. Respect each other, y'all. Does not matter your race, does not matter your color, your gender, none of those things matter. What should matter is for you to figure out your purpose, your goals, your dreams, and to help other people do the same. Because if you do those things, we will be running on full cylinders in this country as you all get older. Because we need you young people more than you can imagine. And y'all are capable of big things. I see it and I want you all to see it in yourselves. So the first letter in the word boss stands for believe. Everybody say believe. Believe. Okay, so check me out. Listen in, listen in. No dream, no goal can be accomplished if you first and foremost don't believe in yourself. Right? You can have dreams. You can know what your goals are. But if you don't believe in yourself that you can actually do what it is that you aspire to do, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who your parents are. It doesn't matter who your friends are. It doesn't matter how, that, how bad they want those things for you. Until you make up your mind and you say, hey, I want to be that brain surgeon or hey, I want to be that singer, or I want to be that helicopter pilot. Until you make up your mind and say that you're going to do those things, they won't happen. Belief is something that each and every one of you have the capacity to do on your own. You don't need a, a manual, you don't need encourage. You, you just need to believe. Okay, so when I think of the word believe, I think of the individual who's on the screen behind me. And one of my fellas, Raise your hand if you know who this is. My man in the back with the blue shirt with the Nike check on it right there. Yes, come on down. Make your way down. Yes, you stop looking behind you. Right there, come on down. Go to the way. Y'all give him a round of applause. Have a round of applause. Y'all listen in, listen in, listen in, listen in. Listen in. All right. Hey, my brother, and all I want from you is, is your first name, and you tell me who that is. My name is uh, Jack. Hold on, hold on. Face, face, face the crowd. Let them see your face. Okay, go ahead. My name is Jack. Jack, nice to meet you. I'm Tyler. Who's that on the screen? Deshaun Watson. Man, big ups. Give me, give me some doubt. Give me some doubt. Take care. Go on up. So, y'all give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. So, so, and, and great job speaking with confidence, my brother. The gentleman's name on the screen is Deshaun Watson. Okay, and I recognize not everybody plays sports, but understand that this has absolutely nothing to do with sports. It's more about the, the man and his character. Okay, Deshaun Watson was born in Gainesville, Georgia. He has three brothers and one sister. He was born into a single parent household. His father was not around. I know some of you all can identify with that. His father was not around. His mother was diagnosed with cancer on her tongue at the age of 17. What happened was she ended up having part of her tongue removed so her ability to speak with clarity wasn't possible. Deshaun wanted better for his mother. He wanted better for his family, so he recognized that he had a gift to play football at a very early age, and he made his mind up that he didn't want his parents to have to pay for his college and that he would make it to the NFL. He came out of high school, he was the best player in the country, no matter what position, he was the Gatorade player of the year coming out of high school. Best quarterback in the country at that particular time. He gets a scholarship to Clemson University, which is in the state of South Carolina. He believes in himself, and he ends up gaining the starting role as a sophomore in college. He led his team to the national championship because he believed in himself. Didn't matter how young he was. They didn't win, they lost to Alabama. But he decided to come back the following year, and he believed in himself so much that he led his team to the national championship once again, but this time they prevailed and they won. He ends up getting drafted by the Houston Texans, number one for them in the first, in the first round. But what's amazing about Deshaun is not the athletic ability, not the fact that he could run or that he could throw. What's amazing is, is his heart and how he utilized his gift to get to the NFL as a blessing to be able to help other people. 
when he got his first ever paycheck from the National Football League, instead of buying jewelry, instead of buying cars, instead of buying a house to live in, he took his paycheck with him to the Houston Texans facility. Because it was at that time, the tropical storm and hurricane Harvey, which blew through across the Texas Gulf. I know many of you are all familiar. Maybe some of your families were affected. When Hurricane Harvey came, the cafeteria workers at the Houston, Texas facility, a lot of them had lost their homes. So Deshaun took his paycheck with him when he got it, and he gave it to the cafeteria workers who were at the Houston, Texas facility because they had lost their homes. He also volunteers for Habitat for Humanity. He helps build homes for people who don't have homes to live in. Why? Because when Deshaun was growing up, his family lived in public housing, going from place to place. And Habitat for Humanity, when he was younger, they came and they built his family a home to live in. So not only does he have athletic capability, but what's even better is his belief in himself provided him the opportunity to go back and help other people, which is what life is all about. It's about we instead of me, so you can be a blessing to somebody else. So you have to have belief like Deshaun Watson. Everybody say believe. believe. All right, the next letter in the word boss is an O. And that O, it stands for overcome. Everybody say overcome. overcome. Now, as you can see, the gentleman in that orange shirt back there, he is not the, the tallest man in the world. Okay? Matter of fact, he's five foot five. The gentleman standing next to him, his name is Eric Judge. I think Eric Judge is like 6'8, close to 6'10. If you know who the gentleman is in the orange shirt, please, please raise your hand. Do you know? Oh, I like it. I got to get a girl this time, fellas. I got to get a girl. So you in the blue shirt. Yes, ma'am. Stand up. Make your way on down here. Because I got I to gotta get the ladies. Y'all give her a round of applause. Give her a round of applause. All right, all right. Come on, come on down, my dear. All right, y'all listen up. Listen up. Listen up. I can tell y'all know him. First off, what's your name, my dear? Elizabeth. Nice to meet you, Elizabeth. My name is Tyler. Who's that in the, red, in the orange jersey up there? Jose Altuve. Jose Altuve. Y'all give her a round of applause. Awesome. Awesome. So you got Jose Altuve. Okay. Jose Altuve. Phenomenal, phenomenal brother. Um, if you don't know anything about sports, it's all good. Like I told you, it doesn't matter about the sports. What's more important is the story because I'm sure it's something that we all can relate to. Okay? Jose Altuve was born and is from Mordecai, Venezuela. All right? He fell in love with the game of baseball at the age of four. And Jose and his family did not have the resources that many of us have within this country. Okay? In his home growing up, they didn't even have running water. So to take a shower or, or a bath, rather, he had to walk 10 blocks just to take a bath. And it wasn't in some shower or bathtub. They had to take a bath in a nearby creek. So they didn't have much, but he loved baseball. And what was amazing was that his father took the time to teach Jose baseball each and every day when he got off of work. Didn't matter how tired he was. Jose's love for baseball continued to grow. As a matter of fact, when he turned 16 years old, the Houston Astros were having a tryout in Venezuela. So Jose said, you know what, I'm going to go and try out. Remember, he's not the shortest dude in the, I mean, he's not the tallest dude in the planet, okay? So he goes up to sign up, and the Houston Astros tell him to go back home. They said he was too small. There's no way he could play baseball. But Jose decided, you know what, I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to overcome in the face of adversity. I'm not going to give up on myself. It doesn't matter what people have to say about me, my goals, and my dreams. I'm going to overcome that, and I'm going to persevere. So what he did was he came back in the afternoon and he snuck into the baseball tryout when people weren't looking. And what he ended up doing was he ended up having an amazing performance. And it was so good that the Houston Astros came back and said, you know what, we want you to come to our minor leagues in the U.S. And if you play well in the minor leagues, you can play for us in the major leagues. So Jose, Jose comes to America. He's about 16, 17 years old now, young. And he's in America, new place for the very first time. And he ends up fighting his way through the minor leagues. And at the age of 21, at the age of 21, he makes his major league debut for the Houston Astros, all right? But it all started because of his amazing capability to overcome when people sat there and told him to his face that he wasn't good enough, that he wasn't tall enough, that he, that he wasn't smart enough. And young people, I'm here to tell you that there are going to be individuals that you encounter in your life that are going to tell you you're not good enough. They're going to tell you that you're not capable of doing those things. But after you've established belief, you got to get ready for what the real world is going to throw at you. 
And when people throw those jabs and they throw those side comments, you got to overcome all of that and have faith in who you are, belief in who you are, and be willing to overcome the adversity. The best part about Jose is his, his, his love for the community. He goes back to Venezuela and he helps young boys and young girls in their dreams of baseball and softball. He puts on free clinics for baseball back in Venezuela. And he also does the same thing in the, ci the city of Houston and around the Metroplex area. So he's a giver. He's a servant. He always values helping other people, the same attributes you need to have. So you have to believe. You have to overcome. The next letter in the word boss is an S, and it stands for strategize. Everybody say strategize. <laughs> ah, yes, and I know you know this young lady who's on the screen right now. Oh, my gosh, y'all already have your hands raised. All right, my dear right here with the, with the blonde hair, black coat, purple shirt, come on down. Come on down. All right, all right. Y'all listen in, y'all listen in, y'all listen in. Y'all listen in. Come on down, my dear, come on down. Come on down. All right, y'all give her, give her your undivided attention. Give her your undivided attention. Listen in, listen in. Hello, how are you doing? Good. You didn't think you were going to be speaking in front of your classmates, I bet, when you woke up out of bed this morning. Not at all. What's your first name? Meredith. Nice to meet you, Miss Meredith. I'm Tyler. Who's that on the screen, my dear? Beyonce. Hey, put a ring on it, girl. You better go sit down. <laughs> Y'all give her a round of applause. Give her a round of applause. So, so like many of you already know, you know, this is Miss uh, Beyonce Carter. I guess, because she's married to Jay-Z, so I will call her Mrs. Beyonce Carter. Um, you all know who she is. Doesn't matter if you're male or female, many of you know who this amazing woman is. Okay? Just like you, she's from the state of Texas. She grew up in the south side of Houston, to be specific. And what you may or may not know is that Beyonce, I'm sure these teachers know this, used to be a part of a singing group. And that singing group was called Destiny's Child. It was with three of her other friends, right? Destiny's Child will, argue, will go down in history as arguably one of the greatest R&B singing groups of all time. They sold 60 million records worldwide. They have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But when I talk about strategizing, I mean you have to come up with a plan. And Beyonce had an amazing plan. In 2005, she decided to break away from the group so she could start her solo career, which is why you all know her as Beyonce now. She started her solo career, and it was a phenomenal move because in doing so, her talent shined so bright. She ended up winning six Grammys, which you see her holding right now. Count them six. She was the first female artist to win six in one night. Adele came back in 2012 and tied her six, but Beyonce was the first one to do so. She's the only artist to have six, count them six, albums. All six of the albums she's come up with, they've debuted in the Billboard Top 100 list as the number one, as the number one album. Every album she's come up with has been number one. First female artist to go ahead and do those things. But what's amazing about Beyonce is not just her amazing singing career, acting career, and her performance, it's her heart to help other people. In 2007, she donated $7 million of her money to the city of Houston to combat homelessness. In 2010, she put on a free concert to help the country of Haiti, which is one of the more poor countries in the world. She helped that country because it was demolished because of a... Uh, a, some, a tsunami and an earthquake. Right after that, when Hurricane Harvey hit, if you wanted to find where Deon Beyonce was, she was in the south side of Houston handing out free meals and other clothing for people who lost everything in the, in the town in which she loved. It did not matter how much money she was worth. If you guys listen to 102.3, there was a song that she's on called Megente, and in that song, all the proceeds from that song went to people who lost everything they had in the, the Caribbean as well as in Mexico. So she's very, very giving of herself. But it all started with her ability to strategize and come up with a plan. Young men and young women, if you have dreams and goals, you should be doing something every day to help that dream and that goal. I don't care what it is. And you need to start writing down your dreams and your goals and be specific on when you want to accomplish those things. All right. Hold yourselves accountable because what you do each and every day, along with taking care of your academics, what you do towards your dream was what will help you make that thing a reality. So everybody say strategize. strategize. All right. Here we are on our last S. 
All right, our last S stands for sacrifice. Sacrifice. If you know who this is, if you know this, oh, I got to get a fella. My man right here in the Westlake lacrosse shirt. Come on down. All right. All right, all right. Represent my man. All right, y'all listen in. Y'all listen in. Y'all listen in. Listen in. Listen in. Come here, my brother. I love this. I love this because you, hey, you know champions, bro. Doesn't matter if it's a girl, does not matter, man. You know champions. So, what's your first name? Aiden. Aiden, nice to meet you, my brother. Who's that on the screen? Simone Biles. Simone Biles. Give me a hand. For, hey, y'all give him a round of applause. That was awesome, Aiden. Much respect. Much respect. So, listen in, listen in, because I don't want to go over the time. Listen in. So, this is Simone Biles, all right? Like I tell everybody, it's not about the sports, it's about the story, okay? So, Simone Biles was actually adopted when she was younger. She was adopted by her own grandparents out of foster care. At the age of four is when she fell in love with gymnastics. Her daycare took a visit to a gymnastics facility and she fell in love. And she utilized her love for gymnastics to do something amazing with her life. At the age of 15, she became one of the top juniors in the world, listen to me, in the world at the vaulting at the vaulting event as well as uh, the women's all-around event. At the age of 16, she became the first African-American to win the women's all-around event. By the time she was 18 years old, she had 10, count them, 10 gold medals, all right? In the Rio Olympics in 2016, she won four, four gold uh, three gold medals and one bronze medal. By the time she turned 21, she took nine months off from gymnastics and ended up, listen to this, ended up winning the entire U.S. championships all by herself. She won all five gold medals. All five of the events, she won, bringing her medal total to 24. But she had to sacrifice. She had to give up a lot. She ended up training as a child growing up 50 hours a week for 10 years straight. She gave up fast food. She wasn't able to go up to public school. She was homeschooled. So she gave up a lot, and whatever you want to do in life, young people, you got to be, be willing to sacrifice. It may be the video games, the television, the phone, but something's got to go in order for you to make room for your goals and your dreams. And Simone volunteers her time for foster kids. She raises money for kids, getting backpacks, food, and other resources for them. So just as much heart as each and every individual that I listed to you has, they have an even better passion to serve. Doesn't matter how much talent they have. They like to help other people. Can you understand that it doesn't matter what you want to accomplish? What's really most important is your ability to stay humble and help other people in the process. Don't put down your classmates. Give your teachers your undivided attention. Tell your parents that you love them. Respect the person who's to the left and to the right of you. So let's recap what we learned. We learned about the word boss. The letter B stands for what? B. The letter O stands for what? The letter S stands for what? And the last S stands for what? So boss up, young men and young women, accomplish your goals and your dreams, and you ensure that you help the people around you at the same time. Have selflessness instead of selfishness. Have a we attitude instead of a me at. I mean, have a we attitude instead of a me attitude. Can y'all do that? Make some noise. Can y'all do that? How much time do you have? If there's any room for questions, I'll take some. You can probably take about four questions. Okay, if you have a question, please raise your hand. If you do have one, I saw you in, in the blue shirt. Do you still have one, my brother? Say what? You forgot it? Okay, no worries. Does anybody else have one? You, yes ma'am, right there? If, yes ma'am, if you want to stand up, can you shout from there? Did you ever have another dream? You said, did I ever have another dream? Absolutely. What's your first name, first and foremost? Ma'am, it's Lauren. I like your voice. I like your voice. You can be seated. So, um, football was one. That was, that, was, that was my biggest dream. But I always knew that I always wanted to do something to help other people. I just never knew exactly what that was. As a matter of fact, holding the microphone, I waited to my senior year in college to take freshman speech courses. So you're looking at somebody who was always very scared to talk in front of people. This right here, Ms. Lauren, is not what I wanted to do with my life. But sometimes in life, when things don't go as well, your other talents will start to rise. And what I figured out was I'm actually pretty good at this talking thing. Like, I can fake it till I make it. You know what I'm saying? So um, when I started to see that, 
I recognize, boom, this is my real dream. This is what I'm supposed to do with my life. All right, so when one door closes in your life, another one will open. Yes, sir, right here, what's your first name? When did I start doing this? All right, I'll give you an example. When I started doing this actually was in sports. I was always a team captain no matter what level I played at. Um, so as a team captain, I would always talk to the guys, right? And I can remember when I was in college, I remember um, we, were, we were losing. We weren't really good, okay? So I remember standing on a chair in front of 100 guys in the locker room and talking to the guys about how we got to do better, how we represent the community. So in essence, I started speaking then, and when I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, I became an ambassador for the entire multiple sclerosis society. I thought that was great. And I asked the people, what is a multiple, what's an ambassador? And they said, well, you have to come give a speech in front of 850 people. And I was like, well, time out. I don't want to be an ambassador no more. You know, and so that, I was about 23, 22 years old at the time, and I gave my first speech, my first real speech, first one. You in the top, and then I'll get you right there. Yes, sir. Give me a yell. Have, hey, put some, put some bass in your voice. Come on. Yeah, okay, so he asked, how did I know that I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, okay? Listen in. It, didn't, it came without warning, okay? I went to sleep after playing BYU University. We played them, and I woke up the next morning, and I fell flat on my face. So I, didn't, I wasn't able to stand up. I literally woke up out of bed, you know, to use the restroom, and instead of standing up, I fell. And I had slurred speech. I couldn't talk, and I had paralysis all on the right side of my body. I couldn't walk. Um, so my roommate had to carry me and we got to the training room and I ended up getting to the hospital in La Jolla, California and they gave me a spinal tap. And what a spinal tap is is where they take a needle about this long and they put you in the fetal position and the nurse comes and sticks that needle in your spine and pulls out your spinal fluid. And it came back positive for multiple sclerosis. So that's, that's how I learned that I had the disease. Um, there was somebody over here that, yes ma'am, real quick and I'll go, I'll go back. Stand to your feet, ma'am. What's your name? Miss Ryan. Ryan. Okay, y'all give Ryan your attention. Go ahead, Miss Ryan. How old, were you when you got diagnosed? How old was I when I got diagnosed? So I had, it was a month after my 21st birthday. One month after my 21st birthday, I was very young. And those of you who don't know much about multiple sclerosis, it's actually classified as a white woman's disease. Um, there's more, my, the overall population, there's more white, Caucasian women that have the disease. And so I was the oddball over here because whoo -hoo, I'm black. And, uh, and, and number two, I was a male. Um, so it was, there's no history of it in my family whatsoever. And I was dying, and that, that's literally like, that's what, go ahead. Um, and also, uh, when did you overcome so, so she asked me when I overcame the disease, okay? Um, I was raised as a child to never give up and never quit. Okay, those are the first lessons I ever learned as a child. Like, no matter what, you don't quit. Because if you quit at one thing, listen to me very closely. It does not matter what you do. Listen to me very closely. If you don't take anything away from me, please take this. If you quit at one or something in your life, it becomes easy and it becomes a habit. So therefore, if you quit at something, you will quit at everything for the rest of your life. So no matter what you do, you finish what you start. And what I want to tell you all is this. I reverted back to what I learned as a child. And I said, OK, this is what I have. I'm not going to give up. And I'm not going to quit. And I'm going to persevere through this thing. And I'm still going to accomplish things that I want to accomplish with my life. First and foremost, my degree in college with a business management degree. OK? So it's just a mindset. You make up your mind to never give up, never quit, and I promise you will have what you want out of life. And I think it's you guys' time to go ahead and get out of here. So I hope you all had some fun. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Hope you all had some fun, and uh, enjoy your time with the teachers. Great job. All right, sixth grade. Let's give it up for my friend Tyler Campbell. I gotta bring you back down because we've got to get to class so I need you to listen very carefully if you are from Miss Houseman and Miss George to the wall you may 